Okay, hi. Uh, let's start out this then. <clears throat> um, well, I talked, uh, I wrote about Quick and H HSTS, but I think I'm going to start off um, doing some other bugs and pull requests. And uh, I'm also trying to um, change uh, the way I show my screen. So I have a few different setups. So I can show you my, like this is my um, editor and my main terminal window and I have my browser over here. Uh, no, that was broken, so I need to fix that. Um, where is that? That's not, that's not the right one. Over there, that's the browser. <clears throat> so, we got a new fun bug report um, tonight, I think, which is the one uh, on top here. So, I'm going to take a look at that and then I'm going to um, see. Well, I, um, right, I'm, I'm starting out with uh, merging my pull request that I made the other day when I showed you on, on this live stream. So um, I changed the disconnect timeout with the ping pong protocols. And um, most of the builds run th fine. It's only one build bot issue here. And that's Mark's build bot and I talked to him and he has some problems with that particular build bot. So it, it'll fail all the time. So I'm going to ignore that. So I'm instead going to go over and merge that um, to git. So here are my branches and I have a lot of branches and that's the branch I was working with. And I'm going to check that the commit message is fine wasn't. Uh, it closes 3374 and I believe it fixes. Which one does it fix? Uh, I'm going to switch over to the browser and <coughs> it fixes. Where is it? There it is. 3264. I'm particularly good at doing typos in my commit messages. Mm. And I did it again. Of course, I put that in the wrong commit message. So let's reword both of them. That's the that's the commit that fixes and closes. And the other one doesn't uh, fix or close anything. <coughs> there. Okay, I just need to make sure that I have your I have the stream chat going. Where is it? There. <coughs> Okay, so that's um, that's the commits for that pull request. I didn't get any response from the person who submitted the bug report, so I'm going to assume that it is fine. I think it is fine. And there is the. So now it's merged into master. I'm doing fast forwards. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a ping pong. I'm just merging this ping pong um, pull request. So now it's uh, now it's done. That's it. So now now I'm going to switch over to the bug of the day. Well, I have two bugs of the day, but the, one of the bugs I think it's already fixed. So I'm just going to ignore that. This. Um, 
this one that maybe I should enlarge this a little bit. There's a bug uh, bug report that says we have a problem with port numbers with IPv6 numerical addresses, and we do because I messed it up, uh, but I think we fixed it already. So now I'm going to look at this bug report originally reported on, for Red Hat, and I'm going to read that original bug report first and see if they have some interesting details. I'm pretty sure this is a regression. I, th I don't think we had this problem in the past. Or maybe we did. 100% reproducible. Mm. Okay. Kamil Dudka provided. I did this. Two command lines expected. Yeah, it's supposed to overwrite the file on the second invoke, right? So I'm going to try exactly that command line over in my shell like this. I'm running my local build. Yes, I am the developer of curl, even in f even if I am the PHP things. The PHP uses libcurl. I work on libcurl primarily. I don't really work much on PHP stuff. <coughs> okay, it's saved that one. I love how it how it uses a curl download. To reproduce it and there when I do it again I imagine that it'll just append to that file yes it did and now it's twice as big and that's not good <coughs> so why does it do that I better check I think it's callback for right or is it the header callback? Right, so there's a callback for each HTTP header that the tool gets, or all HTTP headers, or actually any header for all protocols, but in this case it is HTTP. <coughs> so it's a content disposition which says, which hints about the file name that it's going to use, and which is what the dash capital J option does. It tells curl to use that, um, well, to use the file name from that header. Um, so, uh, when it does, it should create the file, rename the initial file name to the new file name, if it's already created. And it does this tool create output file. I guess it's the one that open for writing append. <coughs> so why does it ask for an append? It does ask for an append here. Is that the <laughs> I guess an immediate thing to try is just to not append and see if that fixes the problem. But then I need to consider if it should do append in some cases and some not, or whatever it is. Getting wind up, wound up here, so I need to get my shirt off here. <laughs> Uh, cheers then. So let's run that command line again. Boom. <laughs> Failed. Oh, okay. So hmm. 
Hmm. Why does it do that? Just because don't overwrite existing files. Is that what it I'm adding the verbose option as well and I'm going to see what it says. Refusing to overwrite file exists. Yes, coffee of course. I had to prepare myself with a cup so I didn't have to I don't have to interrupt this to get my coffee. Um so the question is from from the chat in and Twitch who pays me and actually nobody pays me for the moment at least since I quit Mozilla last week and uh, I haven't signed up for anything new yet so I'm just going to do nothing for a while and be happy no I don't know I haven't really decided on what to do and I'm considering options <coughs> so I need to figure out I need to see when we use this function in other So there, it is used in a few different places, and I need to make sure that right now they're all passing false to that function. <laughs> so maybe append is not the right thing there. Oh, someone is on my door. Hang on. Oops, package delivery. Okay, back to this. I think I'm going to change this uh, argument since nobody's using append then anymore if I don't want an append here. <coughs> so I'm going to I'm probably going to change that to uh, allow overwrite. And if I do that, then it'll say this, bam, and it has overwritten it, and it works. And if I do it again, it's still the same. If I remove the verbose header, it'll look like more as it did from the beginning. Okay. Did I break anything by doing this? Who knows? 
So I'm going to run the tests, build all the tests, and then I'm going to run the tests and see what happens. And the test is they are going to take a long time to complete. Of course, this isn't exercised by all tests, but at least some. And figuring out exactly which tests is sometimes more <laughs> time consuming than just running them all. So I'm going to run them all and see what happens. Um, at least I'm not going to run it with dash end, which switches off valgrind checks, which makes them run slightly faster. So now they're going to um, sit there and uh, cook for a while. They're going to be running. So I'm going to switch to the browser here. And um, right. <coughs> I'm going to go back to what I intended from the beginning. Oh, maybe I have another bug report that we got. But this needs my tests to complete first before I can check it out. Well, the, the question then is if I have to be careful to not to change arguments to break things for users, but th I don't have to be careful about changing things that are internal. They, I, can, I can change everything internally the way I want to. So it is, it is important to keep track of what is an external change and what is an internal. So everything that is external or used by others, I can't change like this, but this was, is an internal function. There's only it's only used by curl stuff, so I can change it however I think is correct. Um, so f from for a command from a command line perspective, then it, it basically command line users want all the existing options to work exactly as they did before, so I can change that. But everything internally has to can be changed. And for libcurl, that is basically the same thing. Then I have to make sure that libcurl options, libcurl behavior remains, but I can change how how the functions look and appear and work. And it's actually, um, I would say that is one of the challenges of writing curl or, or libcurl all the time to make sure that we write it in a way that makes it possible to keep changing, but um, keeping the behavior. And uh, so usually I try to not expose, I mean, ex only expose what I need to to the user and hide the rest so that I get the freedom and liberty to change things internally when, when I need to. So the tests keep running in my other window and that seems fine. They run 300 tests right now, so it'll be fine in another few, five minutes. So there's a bug report here then that I'm looking at this uh, 3376, which is a embed TLS bug. Well, it's not a bug in, it's in the embed TLS backend. So, you know, curl supports quite a few TLS libraries. Uh, well, as you can see, well, you can see that as easily now as you could see the other day because I changed the layout of stuff. But this is my, as you can see, this ed editor on the right here is um, my Emacs editor. And what you're seeing is, well, it is a KDE Plasma desktop. so. You can't really tell by this look, but that's what I'm using. <laughs> uh, well, I don't. I don't personally write a lot of. I don't. I, I basically never use Windows myself, and I certainly don't develop on Windows if I can avoid it. So I usually don't do. Windows specific things. Sometimes I do anyway and just let the test servers test it out and it it's fairly okay. But usually we have we have other people who are using Windows more day to day and natively and they typically help me fix the Windows specific problems or issues and, and stuff like that. So um, it tend to work out really good with the Windows stuff and in general we keep 
curl and libcurl very generic, so it's the same code. I mean, 90x percent, 98, 99, 97 percent of everything is the same on all platforms. So we usually don't have to care about it being whatever platform it is. You just use whatever platform you're convenient or, or I mean, happy with, and it it will be fine. <coughs> Um, so, bleh. did the guy who misspelled the referrer in the HTTP spec ever get taunted about it? I don't know actually who did it. I think referrer was a header that was introduced a long time ago. I guess one of the first by Roy or Larry who, who did the first um, HTTP specs. And actually I never asked any one of them how that happened so i don't i don't know if the, it's kind of an interesting typo of course okay so i uh, so this test fails it tests with the sftp and that is because sftp is one of the few tests or actually scp and sftp are, are the the one two protocols one two depending on how you count it. it's it's uh, they're both on over ssh so we use the native OpenSSH server to run the tests, and that is that hits me right now because I have a newer OpenSSH than my old, currently used LibSSH2 supports, so it'll fail all the SSH based tests. So I'm going to instead make a I'm going to make a pull request of this and, and let the test servers run through all the tests since well the first four hundred and fifty tests were okay anyway, so maybe maybe it'll be fine. Overwrite the destination file. Fixes. Fixes. What does it fix? It fixes uh, 3380. Maybe. Well, I think it does. So let's make a pull request out of this and then go to the other bug. So I, this is how I tend to do the pull request. I just pull it, I push it to, to the correct <coughs> branch. I usually make a branch in my, like that named with my own nickname and then I'm push and then I'll just create it. I'll just create it on the website. Boom. Maybe I should set a label as well just to <clears throat> okay, then over to the fun embed TLS backend should should use verify host to control C and checking. I'm not so sure I agree with this. Let's see how it works. I'm going to First, let's build it all with embed TLS, the embed TLS backend. Back to the ma master branch, and then I have I have this um, <laughs> yeah we we should have test servers in containers. I, I agree that would be um, a step up, and it would also enable us to easier run things in parallel so you could fire up one test and then continue with something else and test something else in parallel so one of these days we could do that so I, I have this fun setup that I have a local directory in my test actually in my development directory as you can see here they're all called the uh, bazillion files called my configure and some weird description and they are basically configure command lines to build various configurations. So I have this 
config my configure embed TLS and it looks like this. It's just a command line that I can use to build uh, configure my configure uh, configure my build to use embed TLS for a TLS backend. So um, <clears throat> it is interesting that if you're if the machine is fast enough, uh, <laughs> it'll take long, much longer time to run configure than to actually build everything else. So there it is. It says, um, it should say, um, where, where does it say it? There it says, embed TLS enabled. And yeah, the rest of the options are not that important, I think. So we build everything with embed TLS. Everything should work. Okay, so embed TLS is here. VTLS embed TLS. Verify host. Where do we use that? There we're using verify peer. So we have this setup where we separate the options for how we verify the certificate in TLS connections. And uh, someone says that CMake building system is faster than Auto Tools, And yeah, <laughs> you may say that and that I'm actually not sure that it's true. But even if it is, uh, you go ahead. Uh, um, our CMake system that has been laying behind the auto tool setup since we uh, started to support CMake and CMake is still not even close to as supported and as auto tools in our project. So therefore if you if you want to use the every little tiny detail of, of building weird stuff with curl you do it with auto tools. That's just how it is. And I think primarily that is because I know and work much better in auto tools than I am in with CMakes and uh, we have we have a few contributors who are CMake uh, aficionados and who work with it a lot but they're I think like most of us they tend to fix their own issues and problems and which makes uh, a few areas it, it leaves a few areas where where the, our CMake build is rather lacking so uh, for example if you want to build with different TLS backends uh, I would not advise to use the CMake build systems because it can only build with a few of them, I think. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, then we have this weird setup where we can actually allow a certificate, a service certificate to, to um, well, we use two different options to verify the certificate. One is verify peer, which, which verifies the digital signature in there. And there's one called verify host, which verifies that the host name is fine within that certificate. So there are two separate checks. Uh, I honestly can't remember why I split up that test or that check. I think, and it's still being used like, so you can actually take that valid certificate and put it on a different server and w f while debugging, you can switch off the host check and it'll still uh, verify the the, cert the rest of the certificate check. Why you want to do that, I don't know. But um, still, that's how it works. And it's been working like this. <laughs> Again, then back to what I'm changing and not. And that's definitely a change in behavior that I'm not changing. Well, at some point in the future, maybe, but I don't think. So, so there's a verify host that seems to not be used at all in this file, which is probably the the exact thing this user was saying. So back to reading the bug. The certificate rec should look at verify host, blah, blah, blah. If CN checking is done. Yep. Uh, 
it's not always possible to separate the checks but depending on the the APIs and stuff that the SSL uh, TLS libraries provide but um, it's also very possible that this does load the blah 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 <coughs> Verified pair. Like this. It checks the file. What does it mean? Okay, there it is. If it's a CN mismatch, maybe that should just check the other option then. <coughs> maybe I should... How should I test this out? You know, with the, the regular command line, it just has this insecure option. Or it actually, as m most people would use it like this, so if I do... Um, something like this, it would just get this website and not verify the certificate, which in this case, of course, makes no difference because it'll work either way. Uh, <coughs> mm, okay, now I know. I'm going to I'm going to pass it a wrong host name. And I'm going to do this like this. Resolve four for three and um, host Daniel So I'm going I'm going to pick that IP address and then I oops. So I'm I'm going to use some fancy feature in curl then that makes it use when I use this host to this port replace the uh, use this IP address so it'll connect to this IP and it says like that exactly the bad search C and mismatch Mm, yeah, I could use the IP address only, but um, that is usually uh, takes a different code path because then we don't have a name. And if we don't have a name, um, then we can't fill in the SNI field in TLS properly. So that tends to make a different error or a different um, behavior at least. So I rather, I rather pass a name that is wrong <laughs> just to, for this set up at least. So I wonder if this actually triggers some other bug as well or some other error as well, but let's We've been discussing uh, adding a method for the um, API to actually figure out which of these fail, or which of these tests that fails. But um, right now we we don't really offer that. <laughs> right, but yeah, IP address you can you can ask for for um, you can get a certificate for an IP address, but then you can. Um, the sending, then they don't use SNI at all. They just have one single host on that IP address. And uh, 
many of the uh, TLS libraries refuse to accept. I mean, you can't set an IP address as an SNI name unless you just send it as a name, the, the IP address, which uh, I know that we have code in some backends that don't really do that. Well, we, uh, I mean, <laughs> yes, we test with misconfigured certs or misconfigured. I mean, what is a misconfigured? A misconfigured cert is also just a wrong cert, right? Or outdated or wrong host name and wrong patterns and stuff like that. So yes, we test that. We have that in our test suite. So we know that uh, most backends actually work fine to detect typical errors in certificates. I mean, these names and stuff. Um, I'm not saying that our tests are all covering. They're certainly not. I'm sure they miss out a lot, but for the basic stuff like mismatching names and, and things, they're there. In this particular case, I think the problem is that we don't have enough tests that do this separation between the failures, like accept this, the correct accept the wrong host name but verify this uh, the signature and and vice versa so i don't think we test that obviously we don't test that good enough in, in the test suite i'm not sure that's such a big deal either but that could it surely be something to check in the future so if i do this now of course this will f still fail but it failed differently. Right, because now when sending the wrong SNI, we will get the wrong cert back. So it'll fail the certificate check anyway. So yeah, this isn't really a good test. So now now the, the code, the previous, I mean, one of the others are just going to trigger anyway. <clears throat> so I actually need I need to get the right certificate with the wrong host name. Mm, okay, I actually should set up a test server for this. Or I can just ask my fellow bug reporter to check it for me. I'm working on the bug report 336076. Repeating myself for the chat. I'm pasting the bug. Uh, <coughs> so I have a fix for it that I think is correct. I'm going to make a pull request and then I'm going to dive into some more quick code, well, HTTP3 code, which is in a very early state, but I could could do that. Okay, Brr. here's a, another pull request. Embed TLS verify host. Me and typing. Bam. embed TLS <sighs> recognize where if I host uh, CN CN name yeah, commit messages. <laughs> Allow use.
previously verify pair would enable disable all checks fixes 3376 maybe well I think so Oh, then, then we're going to the browser land again then here and it'll just pop up here and I'm going to make a pull request, set the label to there to mark what it's all about and jump. Another pull request. The previous one has not really gone that far yet it'll take a while so two pull requests so far and we are on um, well what time is it 40 minutes already okay <coughs> so now then I have this um, not sure exactly how I'm going to go about to do this but I have this work in progress pull request now at uh, 18 commits, 28 change files. It's a separate branch in the NGTCP2. NGTCP2 is a quick library. So it's it actually only implements quick and not HTTP3. So my intention is to write code that uses ngtcp2 that makes initial initial quick connection that is basically as far as this um, can go should go it doesn't really work yet i have this um, branch that is falling slightly behind now i think and i got some comments from tatsuhiro the other day there it's he said yeah two comments and I'm going to start with those and see what I can do okay so then just a little word about HTTP 3 first I of course need to um, make a little push for this HTTP 3 explained which is my little document about HTTP 3 and if you read it you can see that well you can't really see it there but it doesn't matter uh, so hp3 is coming uh, they're working we are they are working on it really hard and the plan is uh, well the charter for the working group the quick working group says that it's supposed to be done by july 2019 so that's seven months away i'm not sure that will stick but even if it doesn't, even if it's delayed a little bit, that's roughly the time frame we're talking about for the protocol itself to be considered done. Um, there are a lot of things with HTTP 3 that I think makes it harder to deploy and it'll take longer than, than HTTP 2 to get adopted and deployed and, and uh, running on the internet. There are no browsers supporting HTTP 3 yet which is just like that, a, a sign that <laughs> HTTP 3 is uh, tough. Uh, there are also some other details, perhaps uh, one of the strongest, uh, I shouldn't phrase it like that, I should say like one of the problems with HTTP 3 is that they modify, it uses TLS 1.3 internally for encryption and um, security, which is considered good. TLS 1.3 improves a lot of things with previous TLS versions, but when they Im implemented Quick, then they decided to use parts of the TLS protocol in a way that no existing TLS library supports. So there are no APIs in the existing widely used TLS libraries to extract those TLS messages because, uh, well, I think 
TLS libraries typically uh, exp um, handles TLS messages, but they are using TLS records, or if it's vice versa. Uh, so, for example, OpenSSL, which is a fairly popular TLS library, they don't have any API for this. And uh, f for all I know, they haven't even started to uh, work on such an API, which I think is going to be a good, not a blocker, but a certainly add a lot of friction to HTTP3 deployment using OpenSSL then, but okay, then you can use another library, but that will also be um, problematic. And for for Curl's case then, since we're already using TLS libraries in all sorts of different uh, cases, it'll be a fun challenge to figure out exactly how we're going to support Quick with one TLS library and use HTTPS with another library on top of that, or uh, I don't know. So there are there are some problems to overcome challenges with HTTP three. Not then just as I mean they're on the browsers and the popular servers they don't support it either. So even if we are seven months away until the protocols are done, I think we're longer than seven months away from it being i mean even possible to use to to a proper extent google has uh, or they have deployed their version of quick on chrome and their web services since forever so the concept of doing webby things over udp based protocol uh, i would say is fairly proven so I'm not, I'm sure it can work out in the end. Okay, so that's, these are Tatsuhiro's comments. And since he is Mr. NGTCP2, I figure those are good comments to listen in to. So I'm going to check out my ngtcp2 branch and uh, check it out. I have a lot of random local comments. I'm going to start out by rebasing this just because um, I don't want it to lag behind. This is basically a long-term branch. So I, I, I rather make sure that it keeps up with all the other things in, in curl. And I want to fix up some of the last thing. Oh. Fix up, fix up. Boop. Oh, some comments. Can you explain the major benefit <laughs> will be over HTTP over UDP? Well, the, ma the major benefit with HTTP 3 is not I mean, it's not really that it's UDP, it's that it's quick. Quick, chain, quick is a new transport protocol, basically TCP done again uh, or differently. And a TCP with streams embedded in the transport protocol. So, and the, uh, and the streams, I would say that maybe the most significant uh, change there is that the stream, there are, there are several, significant changes but one one of the significant changes is that the streams are independent so you can actually set up a connection to one server like i connect to my server and i uh, ask for a bunch of resources one resource over each stream like three streams five streams a hundred streams and each of these streams are independent so if you have a packet loss situation when you lose packets on and those packets that you lose they belong to one stream, two streams, three streams. And of course, when you lose a packet, you have to retransmit them since that's, uh, um, it has to be a reliable transfer. But with Quick, you only have to pause the affected streams, not the other streams, which um, that's something you can't do with TCP. So you, you, when you do HTTP2, for example, over TCP, you usually have one connection. So when you lose packets belonging to one stream, all the other streams have to wait as well because you have to retransmit that single TCP packet that is missing so that's one one notable thing how quick will be much better in a packet uh, loss situation so it's not really you 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 mustn't really think about 
that as UDP because uh, that is UDP is just a technicality. It's quick and quick is a reliable transport protocol. It's basically a, a rewritten TCP with security embedded always. So it's how do you get reliability from TCP? Well, it retransmits stuff that it, it I mean, that doesn't come in the other end. So that's basically what Quick does too. And yeah, it has then congestion control and it has to have pacing and all the other things that a, a proper TCP implementation has. And, and <laughs> yeah, there are some other fun things about Quick, but uh, I'd rather not um, talk about Quick the entire stream today. I'm I've rebased my branch. I'm not going to push it immediately, but I'm go I'm probably going to make some more commits anyway, so I, I can push it later on. <clears throat> right, uh, HTTP three addresses slow start, and it actually also addresses a bunch of other things since uh, it's uh, more encrypted, so it's uh, easier to introduce new features in a protocol over time, which is really hard in TCP and HTTP and uh, uh, well, basically the ossification situation. And um, it has uh, much faster handshakes, so you can actually send data faster and it has then early the early data support already from in the protocol from the beginning, which as I mentioned in my previous stream, the problem with T uh, TCP fast open, for example, they should then not have the TCP fast open problem. So possibly you could actually send data much earlier in a connection setup scenario with Quick than you can with TCP and HTTP2. So in, in reality, you should ideally get much lower latency with HTTP3. So better in loss, loss in networks, better latency, more encryption, um, and with more encryption, you also it, it should enable further inventions in the future because fewer boxes everywhere can make assumptions or think of things. I mean, think that they know how the protocol works and therefore sort of lock you up for the foreseeable future. So there are a lot of good things with Quick. I think there are a lot of um, downsides as well, but. Um, like it uses a lot of CPU right now. <clears throat> so this is what Tatsuhiro said. DCID and SCID are not initialized. Well, maybe they're not. So I have this new source file called quick.c, awesome source file already almost a thousand lines and it doesn't work, but it builds with, <laughs> with the latest and UTCP. So if you want to follow along here, this is, it takes a little bit of a effort to build this. I act, if you, if you get this branch that I will rebase more, it actually has a, uh, oh, sorry, that's the wrong file. I can't even keep things apart myself. I have a documentation file called docs HP three dot MD. You can also actually browse it um, if we go to the and GitHub. Uh, if we go to the branches, we can go to this branch. If I go to ngtcp2, there's a docs directory, and there here are some documentation, and you can go to the HP3 file. So here it actually describes. Um, some links for HTTP3 and Quick, as you've already asked in the chat. The, the, um, this is new stuff for a lot of people. It's new stuff for me as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so that says something. You need ngtcp2, which is a Quick library. It, it'll do all the reliable transport stuff for Quick. So you need to get that, preferably from their Git repo. You need to build that and install that. And you also need to build and install their custom OpenSSL version. Back to what I said about TLS libraries and APIs and stuff, you don't get the, these APIs with the regular OpenSSL, so you need their or his version of OpenSSL to play with, with this properly. So if you build and install both of them and then you run configure, 
not CMake <laughs> with with this option and point it to the installation um, path and run configure and you run make and it should all just build fine and if you do like this oh yeah ha huh. so I have the as I said uh, NGTCP2. Here's a command line that I use to build NGT with NGTCP2. So I need to run it. So basically, it just needs to detect um, the library. Is it there? Does it work? Um, if it does, it says some magic defines in an include file. And what it does, I can build, and it says, maybe I should add a line there too, but it, didn't I do that? Is this the wrong? Oh, it's a feature. There it says HTTP3 support, but what? Ah, ha, what a rookie mistake. Build conf to rebuild the configure file. Well, you can't really see, right now I've, uh, remodeled how I'm displaying this in the stream so you're not really seeing my desktop you're seeing my stream selection of a bunch of windows put together in a in a way so <coughs> normally I don't have to remember to do build conf because normally I use configure um, this enable maintainer mode and it's very good at detecting automatically that I need to rerun configure so typically I, I tend to just forget about it but I don't know why it had to do, do this manually right now <coughs> so I'm rerunning it and rebuilt configure I'm rerunning uh, configure again then to identify TCP, NGTCP2 and it should say it should be 3 enabled at the end this is a um, KDE plasma desktop on a Ubuntu Linux. Ubuntu? What did I say Ubuntu? I didn't really think about it. I, I never use Ubuntu. I use Debian. Oh, wow, wow. Mm. Jesus, I'm, I'm looking at things and saying things at the same time. Okay, so now it says HTTP3 support enabled NGT NGTCP2 and that is good and now I can rebuild and it's hopefully building stuff. <laughs> a warning and that's a warning is stuff that I didn't change so right and I <laughs> so okay I I see exactly what it is and I think and see that this uh, code that we recently added so apparently we didn't hmm. interesting that no compiler caught this previously because I why why was it caught now trailer data should be a break Th all right it, it warned on the same code line twice because we rebuild it <laughs> when when you use when you build with, with certain options you actually build all source code twice for for the for testing purposes okay so I think that's it. That was kind of silly because it had nothing to do with quick. Okay, I'm going to commit that separately now and then I'm going to cherry pick that over to the master branch later. Uh, add missing break follow up from actually follow up all oh, right um, 
it's a follow-up from where is it there is it from that one bam okay back to ngtcp2 so now it builds and i don't have any test cases that uses quick or uh, tcp um, hp3 because uh, uh, well i haven't done it <coughs> so i'm using um, basically what we are going to what i'm going to start to use is this command line basically so at the bottom of the documentation here in the hp3 doc which basically says i'm going to run curl and http 3 direct http 3 is different uh, yeah M mqtt protocol you should join the curl channel on i on um, freenode on irc because i know my brother was talking about doing mqtt just yesterday so maybe someone someone will play with that <laughs> even if uh, that said, MQTT is not a straight fit, maybe, but at least uh, there were more than one who think that is a good idea. Okay, so uh, with with regular F uh, HTTP3, you know, when we're talking um, HTTPS URLs in general, we we connect to, you know, an HTTPS URL that means connecting to TCP port 443 and uh, negotiate TLS and um, send a HTTP request. But when when you're introducing Quick, which isn't TCP, it's Quick and it's over UDP. So what is an how do you reach an HTTPS URL when when you want to talk Quick HTTP3? Well, the answer is you don't really directly. You're going to ask another uh, the one of the legacy service is going to be you're going to ask um, an, an http one or an http two th server and that is going to respond with a header back an old service header and it's going to say use this server for and speak quick if, if you want to and then you'd stick to the old protocols if you want to stick to the old protocols or you can switch to the quick one if you want to do that and um, Right, and that's sort of a extra fiddling, and of course, you a browser or, and or regular clients would will cache that information for a while. So, okay, this server is available over there using Quick for another week or month or hours or so. So th the next time you go to that host, you would connect directly to the Quick host instead. But since I don't want to do all that right now, I want to do Quick directly. So I, or I would rather not you do quick. I since curl speaks application protocols, not transport the uh, transfer protocols. So I have introduced this new option called HTTP Direct, which basically says speak HTTP three immediately to this to what I'm suggesting here, which is a bit. Um, it's, that's a shortcut. I'm I'm thinking it could be handy when you know what you're doing. <clears throat> in a future i would imagine that you would ask for hp3 and that then it would upgrade if it can and it would not upgrade if it can't but in this case it'll say to curl use hp3 directly to this host and if you do you would go over to the command line and you would do it like this bam and now it says failed initialization uh, and i think i know why because I have a problem with LD library path library path it's a little bit of a challenge I think to keep have all these different um, TLS libraries figure out in track everywhere export is this how you do it i think it is does that work no 
So it wasn't that. There's something else. <coughs> Usually verbose doesn't say much more. Fail in Ashley. Okay then, let's um, debug it. I'm pretty sure where this is. I think that's the problem. But why does it do that? Get as a cell. How annoying. Okay, it wasn't there. I it failed somewhere else. I I wonder if it reaches this perhaps. It does. There it does. In the set up initial crypto context. Okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought. <coughs> so, um, quick. NGTCP2 is a library than in user space that we use, we use to do quick. And it is it has implemented it provide it provides an API that is TLS library agnostic so you're supposed to be able to plug in whatever TLS library you want which I think is a good um, idea but it makes the API fairly complicated and uh, not easy to use but it hasn't stopped me yet it's just that it doesn't work and I'm not exactly sure how to uh, do all the stuff but uh, <coughs> I'm going to pretend that I can fix this no I'm sure I can fix it somehow it'll just take time most of my 
fiddling with ngtcp2 it comes from the example called client in, in ngtcp2's uh, directory or repository and um, it's a c++ thing so i just I, i've spent a lot of time converting a bunch of that code into curl code suitable for curl but in this case scid and dcid I, I think that's connection id source connection id and destination connection id maybe so here we can say it generates random data into those uh, and so so i should dc ID isn't it? There they are. SCID data. Okay, so I should fill in some fun. I know we have a till S. I have to remember our own APIs for getting random data. Entropy. All oh, right, there it is. It is curl SSL random data, and I'm going to get data into dcid.data size of, I guess. I think it's like that, and I also need to check the return code from the because they can actually fail. Ran random. Ra my typing is so bad. It returns a curl code. So usually call the curl code variable result. So we do result equals pop if result return result. This leaks memory because it doesn't free everything but uh, let's ignore that for now. I would imagine that we do the same thing for the source connection ID Let's just see if that builds at all. It doesn't because we haven't included the right include. VTLS, TLS.h, age, build wrong, VTLS. Discards const. <coughs> um, oh right, I wonder if that's how we do it. We're doing it like this. Forgot about that. Can't even remember how my own how I implement stuff rand dot h and it's
is it like that? We well, need to compare with the example code again. It generates. How does it know that it's 17 bytes and 18 bytes? And it's weird that they're different. It's the same same data, but different amount of data. Without really saying how. NGTCP2 include NGTCP2 TCP2. There's the struct. There's the size. I wonder if I should use that size instead of the size of. And it's <laughs> yeah, Carl has traces that are really old and um. It's hard to remember what you do over time. I mean, I started on this 23 years ago, right? So some traces are fairly old. It's hard to remember all the details. But it usually I don't have to remember all the details. I can just read them up again. <coughs> so I'm going to do data len and I'm, I think I'm going to use is defined for this just to make sure Yeah, I actually started on on um, HTTP GET in 1996, late 1996, which I didn't write HTTP GET. I found it was written by um, another guy. It was really a tiny, tiny little thing that just made a little HTTP uh, request. And then um, I became maintainer of that, and we did some releases in 97. And then I did we renamed it to URL GET in 97. And then when we added FTP support later on, we called it curl and we released that in 98, in March 1998. <coughs> so that's what why how it started. So curl was actually released in March on March 20, 1998. Read only object. That's not good. How am I supposed to const? Maybe I should not make it const. <laughs> yeah, I should use all the cores. More cores are funner. Right, and it wasn't that, it should be rand. Maybe I don't need that anymore, do I? That's pretty good. Okay, so now I get random junk in there. Not junk, but random um, random data. And I think that is what is needed. Maybe that will make my test command line do something else. I mean, even if this does something it still won't work because there are some other details that aren't yeah right now it doesn't complain on quick uh, populate scid and dcid with random data 
and now that was basically what Tatsuhiro said about uh, these they must be random bytes now they are and here he says it looks like RC is still minus one which makes this function fail uh, so that's in libconnect.c so <coughs> That's the generic uh, general uh, connect So if it goes through here result is okay Oh right it needs to provide a socket back Does it sock p sock p socket bad that's what it should do and it should all that's an else there or maybe I can do like this I think or else it should fall through wait I better just single step. Okay, so let's see. Single IP connect when doing a quick connection. This is how I run it. Remove the dash V because it's just a lot of things when debugging anyway. Creates a socket, gets the information where blah 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 is TCP should be false because it's not TCP it's quick so it uh, avoids some of the TCP set up things like no delay and keep alive because we will do them differently over quick and yeah it can bind yeah it, exactly I think it does bind local right it's a UDP <coughs> It's a non-blocking socket, connect time for some, just for timeout things. Timeout, and there it should issue the quick connection packet. And really I should fire up, okay, wait a minute. I'm just going to see what I need to hide from you when I switch to this. Okay, here is my entire screen, so I'm going to fire up a Wireshark here. Here's my... Where is it? It's a little bit too big. Here's my terminal. It can, oh, it can be like that. And then I'm going to start a new tab in that one, and I'm going to fire up Wireshark. Okay, boom. It's really, really big. Gonna make it smaller. And here's a smaller Wireshark, still very big, even smaller. I have one screen that is a 4K screen and one screen that's a 2K screen. That's really uh, not an ideal setup for anything when moving windows between the two screens. <laughs> so let's. We, I wanna. I want to wire shark my connections to NGHTP2, so I'm going to do it like this and go to Wireshark and I'm going to use the host filter to NGHTP2 on ETH0 like that. So that's Wireshark running and I'm going to run again boom setting up things doesn't do anything to ngtcp2 ng and hopefully it will do something now not a single thing okay rc is still minus one 
immediate connect failure okay that was the problem he mentioned <coughs> Oh no, I broke my... No, I didn't. That's the same. Same terminal. Okay, it's so a minus one. Why did it say minus one? It shouldn't say minus one. because <laughs> get pair name Gadoom. <coughs> that was fun. It did slightly more. Yeah. And now we just run into other code that I haven't written. So even if this potentially does the right thing, I don't think it does. Let's see again on this screen. What if I run this? Yeah, right. We can see that it doesn't say anything in in Wireshark. Which is weird. Or not? Or maybe it, it just fails because it tries the IPv6, and I'm d don't do I don't have a working IPv6 in my machine here, so it'll just fail immediately. And since I don't have things set up correctly, it probably doesn't continue. I would imagine that is the reason. So maybe then I just need to continue and do the things correctly so I have this set up I'll just commit this for now since at least um, I actually made something better I will probably just squash those commits anyway before I push this. I don't need different commits for this. <coughs> Let me just go over to the browser and see what what they say about my pull requests. Prototype she needs Yes, it does. So let's do that.
Oh right. <laughs> uh, so I checked out uh, an, uh, the original configure file again, so it needs to rerun configure. <laughs> Just to fix up. I usually do the corrections as like that as fix ups as separate commits and then I so they appear as a as a new stupid thing. Where's the browser? Where's the browser? There it is. <coughs> right, so it, when I do a, a, a correction to a um, pull request, I usually com commit it as a separate, just a fix up like this. So it appears as a separate second commit, just to make, to illustrate that it is a fix for something. And then I tend to squash them before I merge into one, because I don't need to keep them apart when I do the push properly. And uh, I think Daniel also commented on this. Approved, it says, looks good to me, yeah. There, then, then um, that's good. Then back to back to where I was. NGTCP two. <coughs> exactly. That's not how I do it. It is actually already correct. So back to quick connect. Someone asked me if I'm a pro bug fixer and uh, I don't know what makes you a pro bug fixer. I've been fixing bugs as professionally since a long time. I actually got my first development job uh, around 1992 and uh, I've been fixing bugs since. I actually like fixing bugs quite a lot, so I don't mind fixing bugs. I like digging into that, <coughs> but I also like getting things to work properly first and not have to fix the bugs. So back to connect and then back to how does it look like when we connect like this. Bam, it says get peer, or yeah, exactly, get peer name. Because get peer name, it doesn't work with UDP, right? Exactly. <laughs> There's a check here. If it's UDP, skip it. But this isn't UDP, this is quick. It should rather, if it's not just have to reload if it's not TCP because I have introduced this new this new thing here so I keep track of what the connect what transport the connection is using TCP UDP or quick So we can't do get pair name unless we have TCP. So if it's not TCP, there's no connection. It's not really, uh, there's no TCP connection. Because for with quick, there will be a connection, just not a TCP connection. <coughs> okay, another problem. 
SSL errors just calling connection. Well, I suppose that is, f we're actually, I mean, uh, th this is just a, a sign of me having, not having done enough code now. So if we, I wonder if I can, what if I tell it to use IPv4 only? That would be fun, right? I think that's a better idea. Then it'll at least not fail on the IPv6 thing. It didn't really show any difference, but. <coughs> this, this isn't really right. Um, wait connect, it goes to wait connect, but we I haven't implemented the wait connect things correctly, so it won't be able to know when it has connected because I haven't written that code. So it uses the TCP code to check if it's connected and uh, <coughs> checking for TCP connect certainly will not detect it being connected to it quick. So this is not a surprise that it doesn't work. <laughs> then we, we go into really in TCP2 details back to the client code connect It has a callback for. It has one of these. Handshake completed. The question is. What do we call to. Continue the handshake. This is this is the function that we call to initiate everything. But uh, but uh, that's just one call. We need to. Start loop. Yeah, I'm not really good at libev logics. I'm not sure exactly how this works on write stream on read. for TCP. We could potentially fix that later on to do something better for quick as well, but focus on getting it to work now. <laughs> Okie dokie. So these are the callbacks for the event library. So it's when it's writable, I guess it's called. So it calls write CB and read CB. And there's data to read and write. So when there's data to, oops, to write, it calls this. It's a fairly complicated function. <laughs> 
I understand that it's a great stream to watch me think about this. I don't know what to say really. I'm <sighs> this is clearly code that I need to implement, but this client example in NGTCP2 uses the libev library for handling events like readable and readable sockets while we in curl of course we have our own event loop so we need to to deal with it ourselves we fuss curl a lot regarding co the question in the twitch chat so yeah we, we fuss curl a little bit ourselves but we mostly rely on OSS fuss to fuss, uh, fuss really good and a lot. Um, I actually mentioned that on the stream the other day, so if you, you can dig that up if you want to have some more details about that. And I think someone here, he responded, I should have a time to... So let's just say a thumbs up to that. Great. And back to my test of my quick here. I don't think I'm going to do the quick work anymore right now because this is going to be more of um, me copying and pasting code from his example, converting it to C, trying to understand how the APIs are used and, and uh, making sure that we use them the same way or, or correctly. So um, th I, I guess that is why we don't see any wild shark activity either. I think maybe, um, uh, yeah, I need to send packet. There it is. Exactly. That's the send call. So I need to implement a lot of code there to get the actual packet out. I need to do that actual send call myself. <coughs> okay. Well, I also had another thing that I wanted to work on, and that is the HSTS, but I might save that as well. Let's see how the builds are going. Sometimes I'm, j I'm just checking out the Travis builds early. They haven't even started yet. And the app fair Haven't started either. Fun. Okay. Yeah, there was there was another URL parsing bug reported, but I think we already had it fixed. So there again, I I asked him to check if it isn't already fixed because I think it is. <coughs> If you check my uh, stream the other day, we discussed this TCP fast open pull request that was made. And for some reason, the person who did it, he vanished. He removed his repository and the entire account. So the, the, the pull request really broke. He actually removed all the description and the title as well. But someone had it saved. So I re-pushed as a new <laughs> pull request. So I don't know where, where, where that is going because uh, here we really go back to me not doing the Windows development and this is really Windows specific, even specific for a speci um, for a Windows 10 version later than 1607, what is it? Yeah, something like that. And that's 
that's the PR I was working on and then we have the, the different things here's a very similar one to the embed TLS bug basically making sure that these two verify host and verify pair are truly independent as they are documented to be and it wasn't in that back end either we have quite a few pull requests as you can see 29 of them many of them are sort of in a funny state where I don't exactly know what to do with them so they most linger around and uh, where uh, way they are waiting for me to make a decision or someone to m make something happen I don't know <coughs> some of them are also marked with this needs info update three of them right now and they really need someone to do something maybe I'll just close them at some point if nothing happens <coughs> they having just a lot of bugs and pull request requests in the trackers or they are sort of mostly in the way for what's important so having dead idle stalled ones lingering around that's really not useful so I tend to close them if they don't get enough attention for yeah during a certain period maybe months sometimes just weeks if they're dead we can just close them and if they're uh, important enough and have they get attention they will come back or we will give them attention later on Are you willing to work on a PR to fix this? I suppose I should take that as a no after a few months. Okay, maybe I should take a look at SOX 5. I don't remember exactly. I better look into the SOX 5 code. Sox 5, I believe. Sox 5. So Sox is just a really, really tiny protocol header. You connect to the to you connect with TCP to a proxy and you send a little tiny tiny header and then you and you pretend you connect to the actual machine and then you just go on and you connect to the proxy instead and the proxy will then just uh, tunnel everything to the actual remote host so the bug says that some minimum packet size I'm, re I'm reading in the browser here there it says this is the wrong it says it should be when using domain name one byte length string one two three four That's including the zero byte, then I guess, as an under the port there. So if adder len is really, really short, it is actually. Wait. But yeah, this is less than 10. If len is larger than 10, but it isn't in this case, right?
So I can I can set up a proxy. I when I when I want to have a proxy for um, socks, I usually there was a <laughs> I <laughs> realize I'm, I'm sort of going back and th for, but I remember that I fixed this. And I'll cherry pick that into master and I'll just push it because I oh, oops check out set reset hard. So maybe it was in my branch that I had messed that up. It was. So it was a mess up in the in the uh that's why I didn't detect it before because it didn't exist before. It was in my rebase in there somehow. Okay, fine. Then I'm back again to the socks. Yeah, and when I want to do a sock server, I usually just use the uh, SSH, which is a uh, like um 8080 is a good port and I connect to my server like this boop and then uh, then I have an SSH server there on sorry I have a socks proxy on port 8080 now so now I'm going to do make sure that I have a really really short Right, the the domain name there. That's the that's where I'm connecting to, I believe. Three. If not resolve local. That's what we call socks. Host name Lang. Yeah, exactly. That's so. If I have a host name that is one letter. So in my server then, I should make a one letter host name. That can be fun. <laughs> uh, right, I'm just going to use another window that you can see and create a host name on my server that is called going to be 127.0.0.1 and it's going to be called A. So on my server, if I go here on the server and ping A, yep, that works. So from here I want to use a proxy and it's socks, socks 5H I'm pretty sure and I want to connect to H not H, to A. Let's use port 80. No, that's the that's the proxy. The proxy is my machine. And uh, right, I'm gonna, that's the URL. It's a very short URL. Boom. Connection refused. Port, oh right, it's, it's using the wrong port because it's on 8080. Isn't it? Let's, let's stat. <laughs> yeah, I'm stupid also, That's that doesn't help. It was local proxy, right? So it's just connect. So that's how it should work. It worked. No site here. But why did it work?
version 5 looks right proxy user but that didn't do what I thought it would do if not resolve local it is is that not resolve local? That was line 458, 458, it did the right plane. Oh yeah, it's just not done yet. It's supposed to do that and then it's supposed to read something, 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 and then it write, and here, it's number three. And how long is it? How's name Len? It's one. One byte. Right, so the packet here is then eight bytes. Uh, len is eight bytes and write plain. And written is then supposedly also eight, yes. Minimum packet size is ten. No, it's not. If len is larger than 10, it's not. But well, eh, I need to read that check. <coughs> Do I uh, think I'll ever be gra granted entry to the US? I don't know. I mean, I don't think this, uh, I don't think they will grant me entry. This time, at least, since um, it's been a while now sin since I applied for a visa, 244 days and 5 hours, 28 minutes. But, um, I mean, nothing is forever, right? So even if they eventually is going, they will deny me at some point. But I can just apply again or it might change over time. I don't know. I'm actually... I'm I'm actually not even that upset anymore. I mean, uh, I just won't travel to the US. <coughs> okay then. If LAN is larger than 10, but why does it do this? That's a weird logic. And that's uh, right, that LAN 10 is what the minimum packet it reads. Yeah, there are some reasons why going to the US would be fun and useful, but um, actually it doesn't really matter. I mean, they don't allow me to go there, so what can I do? I have to figure out some other ways of uh, managing. And usually I can manage without going there. It's just a pity for both professional and personal reasons, but Um, <coughs> he 
is my Now I can't see what the error here is. I'm going to just ask the <laughs> reporter here if he can provide a more clear r reproducible example. Can you cl clarify? And then I'm going to set this needs more. Needs info or update. Comment. There. Least recently updated. Make HTTP 0.9 opt in. I'm going to close this. This is my own bug report because I think we should do this. But um, it only sits there lingering around. Maybe I should. That's a bit of an annoying bug that it's <laughs> sometimes just forgets the browser in the streaming like that blam so it goes black it's good that i actually it's keep track of what i stream so i can see when things go black <laughs> okay i'm going to make um going to make something out of this i think maybe so http 0.9 is um yeah people are still using 0 0.9 and i know that I think both. I think at least Firefox still supports HTTP 0.9. I think Chrome does too. And HTTP 0.9 is was never a version that was officially called that, but it's basically headerless HTTP response that needs to be closed at the end of the data. But that means that you can base you can ask you can talk to a, a random TCP port really and it'll, if you just send back something that doesn't have a header first it'll be considered as HTTP 0 0.9 and, and curl will support it but um, I, I want to make that an opt-in because it's a bit surprising I think to users and it's also uh, a bit weird so I want to be able to at some point in time remove that support So I want to make it an option first so to be able to disable it. And then I need a test case that sends back HTTP 0.9 response that look that I can play with. And I think I think I've had some problems doing that. I'll so this is how I do a, b um, a test. Let me show you the right window first. So this is um, the file in tests data make file dot ink. This is all the test cases, all the test files we have in the test directory. Quite a few of them. So when I want to do a new test, I'll just grab a number that we haven't used before. Look, 
test 1172. I'll use that. Test 1172. And then I insert another test to have something to start with. Set some fun keywords. And these keywords at the top is just random tags that I can then later use with, uh, and so that I can run only tests that run HTTP 0.9, for example, or only HTTP tests. So, and here are what the server responds with when I ask it to respond something. So yeah, no headers, this is HTTP 0.9. So if I do like this, HTTP 0.9 get, I'm asking for this server, no, this test, this is the request. That's the your, uh, that's the command line URL sent to curl. We need an HTTP server. That's what it sends back. Uh, I'm sure the test server will not really like that. The test server is a stupid thing, but it reads this and tries to figure out how to act on it. And I'm not sure what it does when it does it. No, it won't close the connection when done, I think. So it'll just sit there, send those six bytes and sit waiting on the connection. So I need to force a close after that data is sent back. I just need to make sure that the 0 0.9 response works fine first in the test. So, and then I run that test like this then, boom. I figure it'll get stuck here, like that, because the server sent that and keeps the connection open, but it doesn't it doesn't send any uh, content links or anything. So curl doesn't know that the transfer is actually done. So it'll, it'll just sit there waiting. Um, we can see that we have some logs in the server. Got that request sent back. Send response. Let's send yeah, exactly. Persistent connection request ended. Awaits new request. So it just sits there. I need a way to tell the server that it should close the connection, and I invented different ways. So let's see if the data contain contains anywhere within the start and end tag. Yeah, so I can actually, I think, do it like that. Yes, I could. So, HTTP that works. I should just verify that I actually didn't. Use this in any test already. No, I didn't. <coughs> that's actually pretty good. So that's a very simple, straightforward test that and and uh, when uh, the data within the data within the data tags that curl saves here um the test um, script will verify that this is actually exactly what curl saved after it got this so we know that it'll now save exactly this <coughs> um that's good and this is when http 0 0.9 is supported and now we want a way to disable 0 0.9 support and verify then that we don't get that data.
I remember I did some improvements. Check proto preview exactly, that's where it is. Check HTTP prefix. So we check HTTP prefix if it's matches the prefix so basically if we do HTTP and we don't support HTTP 0 0.9 we need to make sure that the first bytes in response are a match Status line, not the status line, unknown, done, bad. So let's run this again. I do this dash k then saves log files from the test without removing them after the test is run done. That's a good marked for closure, bad HTTP, no end of message indicator. Right which is exactly what we saw that's that what triggers it so if we come here and we don't allow http 0.9 we can pretty much uh, fail the request i think if data set HTTP allowed should yeah you know, and always when adding in a boolean should we make it which way should I make it should it be allowed or should it be forbidden uh, 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 uh. disallowed inhibited prohibited um, if 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 And I need to figure out a good return code if we don't support it. And I've been going on my stream now for two hours and 15 minutes or so, which is longer than I intended, but uh, uh, let me just get to this. And then I might, I don't know, continue a bit more. <coughs> so here are all the error codes in car. So I need to figure out which is HTTP returned error. No, that's not 
read it one post error there are so many error codes but which one would be the most suitable to use maybe one of these weird server reply it is a weird server reply let's use that for now at least I'm not convinced I think that's mostly used for FTP previously so I'm not sure it's a good idea uh, but I can receive is it P zero dot nine when not allowed when not allowed unsupported protocol yeah maybe that is actually that's uh, yeah I thank you that's actually a pretty good uh, error code because it seems well, possibly protocol version, but I think I've used the same one for HTTP two. If you don't, if you try to use it and it, it's not there, so I, I think that's pretty good. <coughs> and now I need to make a way. Okay, so of course I need to add this boolean somewhere. User defined, I think the struct is called. And like this bool HTTP 0 0.9 allowed, allow HTTP responses. Oh yeah, it should not fail. We don't have any code to receive the option, but it should still build and everything. And with this code, the test case should fail because now it's not allowed by default, which we of course can verify then by seeing this fail. <laughs> And we did not. That is fun. And then I have this little option to run with dash G instead. It runs the test case with GDP. Everything else the same way. So I can just set a breakpoint and it'll run. What? Uh, 
I thought I was going Oh, did I need to rebuild? Maybe. But why? Hmm. No, it just works. Why does it work? Okay, so that's so I guess the test is crappy somehow then. this on two places. Okay then, um, yeah, I, I'm going to I'm gonna quit my streaming now um, and go have a coffee and take another look at this and um, I'll be back another day with some more uh, things I guess <coughs> so this was fun um, I don't know what we learned I did some bugs fixes I did some pull requests I've um, been all over uh, I'll um, I'll try to do it again. It's fun, and uh, keep uh, commenting on things. It's make th it makes makes everything more fun, especially when I'm sitting here talking to myself for two and a half hours or three hours. It helps when someone says something. So uh, bye for now. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs>